Cheers, guys. Epics 911. Welcome to the Wednesday, July 5th, 2017 edition of VR News. Guys, lots of exciting virtual reality news tonight. In summary, tonight we're going to talk about Just In Time. Now, Just In Time, according to Upload VR, is the super hot of virtual reality puzzle games. Now, it's a pretty lofty claim. We'll take a look at that. We're also going to examine the update of the turn based tactical RPG. Augmented Empire, as well as a claim from VR Studios, uh, who just announced eight player warehouse scale. That's, of course, via their VRcade Arena. We're going to look at four things that make the Chinese virtual reality market unique. This next story of interest Nokia and Shomei teaming up to explore virtual reality patents together. What the hell does that mean? We'll try to find out. Also going to talk about this setup guide that was located for setting up Windows Mixed Reality HMDs, Apple joining WebVR, and finally, Volkswagen and Volkswagen's plans for virtual reality for the near future and the long term. Should be an interesting episode. Enjoy, guys. So this is just in time, which is the game that Upload VR considers the super hot of VR puzzle games. It's an upcoming Vive game. Think the bodyguard meets the Flash. Your character uses a special pair of gloves that slow down time. Uh, you teleport to various scenarios in which your well-paying customers are about to meet a violent end. And of course, it is your job to put a stop to whatever doom awaits them. So it's uh, apparently a brilliantly varied puzzle game, the type that requires situational problem solving rather than an understanding and mastery of a specific mechanic. So yeah, definitely. I agree with that. That sounds interesting. It's going to be out on Steam July 27th. No price as of yet. So this is the tactical turn-based RPG Augmented Empire. Now you control six misfit party members in this game comprised of three casts and a social system that the game's creators are just calling the citizen grade system now the company says it has a strong focus on story and deep but accessible gameplay it's definitely piqued my interest each episode 20 to 30 minutes long sounds like it'll have some decent gameplay time behind it as well so VR Studios has been around since around 2015. They have had this game that you're watching the trailer for advertised since around the same time. Well, they've just made an announcement that they are going to be supporting eight player warehouse scale via VRcade Arena. And that is the same set of technologies used for this game, albeit uh, not single player any longer like you see here. Now support for up to eight players. So obviously vying themselves uh, positionally for a spot, the VR arcade scene, as opposed to the at-home VR. This was an interesting article on Upload VR about China and the four things that make the Chinese virtual reality market unique. First thing they touched on, mobile VR adoption. And absolutely, uh, if there's one thing that Chinese consumers uh, seem to love based on statistics, it is purchasing and attaching themselves to mobile phones. As a result, no surprise that the mobile phone VR market is as popular as it is there. For an example, the best-selling Chinese VR device is a $20 headset by a company called Ritech. And in China, 100,000 of those shipped every single month. Second is the uh, pay-for-play model. And absolutely... Uh, also in China, a model that works very well. Yes, there's a rising middle class, but there's still not a lot of home virtual reality units. Chinese consumers seem to want to spend money on virtual reality in pay-for-play arcades, as opposed to the much larger investment of purchasing a virtual reality unit for the home. 
And then the third and fourth points, the third enterprise focus, you know, like I just finished saying, HTC Vive in China costs around $1,000 plus the high-end gaming rig that you need. Uh, right now, it's businesses and by extension, virtual reality arcades in China that are buying up the units. In terms of advertising, China way ahead of the rest of the world in marketing and advertising. Marketing commercials everywhere for virtual reality. Honestly, I can't remember the last commercial I've seen for either HTC Vive, Oculus Rift, or PlayStation VR here in Canada. It was CNBC that reported on this next story, and that is about Nokia and Xiaomi, the Chinese mobile phone company, partnering up to explore virtual reality and virtual reality patents as a team. Now, CNBC stated that the two companies are going to be seeking out mutually beneficial innovations specifically focused on VR, AR, artificial intelligence, and more. And a spokesperson for Xiaomi told CNBC on Wednesday that the Nokia deal would help with global expansion, but doesn't necessarily mean the company is focusing on one particular market. Now, what is going to be interesting is to see if anything develops out of this partnership. Oh, this also flying under the radar over the last month, a setup guide for the Windows Mixed Reality headsets was actually made available, at least revealed publicly. Microsoft employee Nadia Steer Mobley last month at the WinHEC event that was held in Taipei, Taiwan, went through the process on stage, showed the screenshots, and if you look at the pictures of the screenshots, very similar to the Rift and Vive. Two key differences, the controller we talked about the other day, the Six Degree of Freedom one, the reference design built by Microsoft, it's up to the OEMs to actually do the branding for that and come up with their own. Similarly, any device companion applications unique to the mixed reality offering of, say, Acer or Lenovo is up to Acer or Lenovo. In other words, up to the OEM to develop. So this uh, revealed today that Apple developers have joined the Web VR community group. Now, this means that effectively with Apple being on board and Safari being supported at a future date, all major browsers in the world now supported for WebVR. Apple very quick to point out, however, that just because they've joined this group with their developers doesn't necessarily determine the direction of their policy. Very quick and clear to point that out today. Somehow, doesn't freaking surprise me. And then lastly, Volkswagen. Well, we've known for a while they've had uh, an application on Android to allow you to view Volkswagen cars in 360 degrees. Volkswagen announcing Wednesday that it had built a virtual reality app that acts as a sort of a digital meeting room so Volkswagen team members can interact with one another, discuss designs, etc. It also contains all of the company's previous apps like the virtual reality car showrooms that they've experimented with all under one hub. Volkswagen saying going forward, we can be virtual participants in workshops taking place at other sites or we can access virtual support from experts at another brand if we are working on optimization. That will make our daily teamwork much easier and save a great deal amount of time. Well, that's it for the Wednesday, July 5th, 2017 edition of VR News. We will be back tomorrow with the daily news and probably a controller-related video. You might notice I've been experimenting with the videos. I will explain that in a channel update video you can expect later this evening. Guys, as always, cheers.